you. Let's start by talking about the new book. Why did you want to write this book about mentoring and teaching? Well, as we know, there is a national conversation happening about education, and I thought I want to throw my own hat in and, and talk about my point of view. So 29 years of teaching, 10 years as a mentor, over 13 seasons of Project Runway. I have a lot to say. <laughs> talk about the concept of being honest and truthful when it comes to educating. Oh, I, think, I, I just so profoundly believe it's so important. And I will tell people the truth with one proviso, and the proviso is providing something that they can change, something they can do something about. If it's something you can't change, I'm not going to talk to you about it. But I at least want you to know that there is an opportunity here for expansion and growth and ascension. I always believe that people can be better no matter who they are. One of the quotes that I read in, in doing some research was you talked about the word fashion and how many people do not like the word fashion, but you said, no, fashion is a perfectly fine word, and if you don't understand it, you're taking away from the potential vocabulary you have to communicate to other people. I, 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 absolutely. I Explain how that. that came, how did you come to understand this? Well, let me begin with the origin of fashion. Originally, it was a verb to fashion something, um, for instance, when Parsons Fashion Program was founded in 1906, it was the first, well, it was the first apparel designer program in the nation. It was called Costume, because that's what you, how you referred to our, our apparel, our clothing as a costume. And fashion came into being really after World War II, um, fashion as a noun. Um, and it was when American fashion was at a very severe, um, turning point because it, we had been a nation of copiers and when the couture houses in Paris closed right before World War II we had nothing to copy and suddenly you see the ascension of American fashion and the noun is born um, and, and I do believe that there's a difference between fashion and clothes we need clothes but we don't need fashion and fashion by definition changes because it happens in a context that's societal, cultural, historic, economic and political and you can tell I could talk all day about it. <laughs> Me, the, let, all right, well, let, let's, no, but let's talk about mentorships because also in that context you've spoken about how applications that you may have received from prospective students, they mention many European designers and even spell some of the names wrong, yes. but that they do not mention American designers even like Michael Kors. And I fundamentally don't understand what that's about. Well, I shouldn't say that. It, 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 embedded in our culture is the notion that real fashion, in quotes, happens abroad. It happens in Europe, it happens in Japan, but it doesn't happen in this nation. And we always talk about clothes in this nation as being wearable. I'll cite Michael Kors also. To me, that's the greatest compliment fashion can receive. Because in America, we look at fashion through a lens of commerce. And for us, if the items don't sell, who cares that they can go in a vitrine in a museum? It doesn't matter at all. So it's all about wearability and saleability. At the same time, we love innovation and creativity. So when you have the whole package, you have everything. All right, let's talk about the whole package when it comes to teach, because yes. using that as a sort of guide, teach, the T for truth telling. Yes. And e. then you've got the E and the A, go for it. E for empathy, A for asking, C for cheerleading, and H I really love, it's hoping for the best. It's all you can do. In your years of educating, have you come across people who don't want to be mentored? Oh, absolutely, I, I yes. How do you deal with that? Well, I give feedback, which is that to be so resistant is to be welcoming a life of stubbornness. And in my experience, stubbornness in any field, in any capacity is never successful. Is the fashion business stubborn to the point where it is putting profits in place of values? I can't disagree. I, I, I would love to disagree. Because you talk about manners and fashion as almost being one, that you can't separate how you behave with how you present yourself. I, I, I do believe that. I believe in the semiotics of clothes. The clothes we wear send a message about how the world perceives us, like it or not. So I'm always saying, I don't care how people dress, as long as they accept responsibility for it. The manners that you're trying to share with other people, I wonder if you can just speak about how manners sometimes get confused with money. Oh, most definitely. And for me, when I talk about manners, I'm talking about the most basic 
aspects of behavior and about navigating the world as a responsible citizen of the world and a, a respectful citizen. And, and when I talk about respect, it's to ourselves, to each other, and to the world at large. I believe profoundly in that. Well, we want to get to know you a little bit more profoundly. So <laughs> we've got a couple of get to know uh, questions. The first is, is there a store, is there a retailer that stands out in terms of exceptional customer service to you? Well, for me, it's the very brand that I'm wearing that I'm so loyal to. Um, it's a, a company called Suit Supply, which is a, actually right at your corner <laughs> at 59th and Madison. Um, it comes from the Netherlands. I learned about it through a New York, New York Times article, and it's fantastic and affordable and the best customer service imaginable. What's your favorite movie? Do you have one? Oh, hands down, no contest, The Wizard of Oz. Why? It represents every emotion anyone can possibly experience. It's a feel-good story with uh, tons of, of, of drama and intrigue and suspense and a morality tale because in the end the, the, the good souls win out, the wicked witch bites the dust and everyone lives happily ever after. 